In the previous video, we saw just how important low latency is when creating interactive audio experiences. But how can you actually achieve this in your app? In this video, I'll show you how the Oboe library helps you to create a low latency audio stream for playing sound. You can play sound through a number of different audio devices, such as the built-in speakers, wired headphones, USB audio devices, or over Bluetooth. An audio stream is used to move data from your app to an audio device so that it can be played. To create an audio stream, we use an audio stream builder. This allows us to set properties on the stream. It's best to leave most properties unspecified to allow Oboe to pick the optimal values for the default audio device. However, to create a stream with the lowest possible latency, there are a few properties which we should always set. The performance mode should be set to low latency, and the sharing mode should be set to exclusive. Once the stream properties have been set, we can open the stream by passing a reference to an audio stream pointer. Be sure to check the stream open successfully, otherwise you won't have a valid stream object. If there was a problem, you can convert the error to a human readable string using convert to text. In fact, convert to text can be used to convert many oboe objects to text. Once the stream has been successfully opened, you can start it asynchronously. You can now send data to the audio device. To put data into an audio stream, we can either write directly into it or have the audio stream request data using a callback. Callbacks give us the lowest latency, so it's best to use them for interactive audio apps. To create a callback object, subclass audio stream callback and override the onAudioReady method. This method is called when the audio stream requires more data. It has three parameters, a pointer to the audio stream object, a container array, which we can write our audio data into. This has type void star because the format of the audio stream can either be 16-bit integers or floats. It's up to us to cast to the correct format. Lastly, numFrames tells us how many frames of audio are required. Each frame contains one or more samples. The number of samples will depend on the stream's channel count. For example, a stereo stream has two samples per frame, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. NumFrames also tells us the maximum time we have to create the data. Failure to supply data within this time is known as an underrun. As an example, if our audio stream has a sample rate of 48,000 samples per second and 192 frames are requested, this gives us 4 milliseconds to create this data. In the real world, we want to keep well under this deadline to allow for system overhead and late callbacks. To give you the best chance of meeting this audio deadline, on audio ready is called on a high priority system thread, which means it won't be preempted by lower priority threads. But it's critical that you don't do too much work or block inside this method. More detailed guidance on what you should and shouldn't do here can be found in the full guide to Oboe on GitHub. Inside on audio ready, we write the requested number of audio frames into the audio data array. This could be generated using digital synthesis or be supplied from pre-recorded audio data. Finally, return a data callback result. This can either be continue, which indicates that we want the callbacks to continue, or stop, which indicates that the stream should stop with no more callbacks. Once you've finished creating your callback object, you can link it to your stream using the builder we created earlier. There's one final step we need to take to ensure our audio stream has the lowest possible latency, setting its buffer size. The audio stream's buffer size affects the time it takes for an audio frame to travel through the stream to the audio device. The larger the buffer, the longer it takes, and the higher the latency. An optimally sized buffer provides a good trade-off between latency and underrun protection. The buffer size must be a multiple of the stream's burst size, which is the number of frames the audio device consumes in a single read. A good rule of thumb is to use twice this burst size. This means that if occasionally we miss our audio callback deadline, the user will not hear an audio glitch as long as the next callback runs on time. Use get frames per burst to get the burst size and set buffer size in frames to set the buffer size. Now that all the stream properties are set, we can start the stream. Callbacks will start immediately. And once you've finished with the stream, remember to close it. After you close the stream, it cannot be accessed anymore. You should now have everything you need to play audio using a low latency audio stream. 
For a working example, check out the Hello Oboe sample on GitHub, which shows you how to create a simple synthesizer app. It also demonstrates how to handle audio device changes, such as when the user connects their headphones. A link can be found below. In the next episode, I'll show you how to record sound through a microphone using low latency input streams. That's all for now, so good luck and go make some noise. <laughs>